Welcome to YouTube Excel Finance Trick number nine. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook Excel Finance Tricks 1 to 17. Trick number nine, you're not going to believe this. This is incredible. We have a common problem that seems difficult to solve in finance, but it's not really. Here's the situation. We have a savings plan that compounds interest 365 days a year. We love that. More times a year, the better. Uh-oh, but we put money in 12 times a year. How in the world can we solve for future value? Here's the setup. Our monthly payment is going to be 250 bucks into the bank. We're going to leave it for 25 years. Uh, the the account compounds interest 365 days a year. We have an APR, an annual percentage rate of 8%. Here's how you do it. You first take this APR or nominal rate and calculate what the effective rate is. We can use the effect function equals effect, open parentheses. All it needs is the nominal and the NPR. Nominal is our APR, comma, and our NPERY is the total number of periods. That is going to be 365. Close parentheses, control, enter. And there it is, 0 0.083 or eight, approximately 8.3%. 8 so effective is always going to be greater than your APR or nominal because of compounding, of course. Now, the step one is to calculate the ear or effective rate. Now, step two, from the effective rate, we're going to solve eight for the AP. PR, annual percentage rate. We use the nominal function equals nominal. And this just needs, it's the same as the effective, except for it wants the effect instead of the nominal. So we're going to hit boop right there, comma, and here's our 12. Close parentheses. Now we have our APR. We can just find the period rate. And that's the rate we're going to use to solve for future value. So you ready? Period rate, of course, is equals the annual rate divided by the number of compounding periods. Enter. Finally, once we have our period rate, boom, we're ready to go with the future value. Equals FE, open parentheses. Hey, all of the arguments in these financial functions, very important. The unit has to be the same for all of them. So for instance, uh, we're doing monthly. So we have our monthly rate, total number of months. And cash flow matters. So we have to make sure we get all our cash flow signs, positive or negative, correct rate. We're going to click right there. Then I'm going to hit comma. NPER is next. Oh, that's 12. No, it's not. It's 12 times 25. Remember, all of the arguments of these finance functions need to be in the same unit. So there we have it. Instead of uh, 25 years, we have 12 periods per year times years. Now I'm going to hit comma. Isn't that cool how you can move that little screen tip around? Comma, and now it wants the payment. Now we have to be careful here. We have to have the cash flow sign right. Hey, if money is coming out of our wallet into the bank, that's a minus. So we're going to, um, instead of 250 bucks, we're going to put minus 250 bucks. And then present value, we don't need. So I'm going to type comma and then another comma. See how when you put two commas, you're allowed to skip an argument. And then type, I'm going to click on this because uh, zero is for end of the period uh, payment. And one is payment at the beginning of the period. I'm going to close parentheses. And then control enter. And there you have it. That's how to go from um, being paid 365 times a year interest, and you're only putting money in 12 times a year. All right, we'll see you next Excel Finance trick.